Astros fans, Jose Altuve goes down. A lot of talk about him being hit in the thumb. Was it on purpose? I don't know. But who's going to be the second baseman? Who's going to lead off? We'll talk about this on today's Locked on Astros. Alvarez hits a high drive center field. Beer leans back. This game is turned upside down. There's the runner. Fly ball down the right field line. Tucker comes on. Kyle Tucker. This time they finish the job. Hello and welcome to Locked On Astros, your daily Astros podcast. Here are your hosts, Eric the Man Heisman and Brett H-Town Wheelhouse Chansey. We are Locked On Houston Astros and we hope that you join us for a daily Locked On Astros podcast. My name is Eric Heisman. You can find me on Twitter at Eric Talk Astros. Find the show at Locked On Astros, your team every day. Brett, where can I find you at? They can find me at um, H Town Wheelhouse on Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok. They can find me at Stros411 on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Always positive. Positive. I'm not a fan of the WBC right now. Always Stros. Today's episode is brought to you by Ultimate Baseball GM. Ever dreamed of becoming a MLB GM and having to deal with an injury like Jose Altuve and manage your baseball franchise? then this game is definitely for you. To download the game, just visit ultimatebaseballgm.com or look it up on the App Store. Our listeners get a 100% free bonus to their franchise when using the promo Locked On, all caps, in their game. And thank you guys for making the Locked On Astros podcast your first listen every day, whether it's on YouTube. Make sure you go and keep on subscribing to us. Go and give us a fat thumbs up while you're doing it. And go and make us your first listen on Apple, Odyssey, Spotify, Google, all the uh, different ways of doing that. Just make us your first listen every day. And we're coming to you live on a Sunday morning because we just felt like we had to. I almost uh, asked Brett if he wanted to do this last night. But it was kind of late, and um, I know he had just done a podcast with the Pesky Report, report and but we wanted to wait till we got a little bit more concrete news. I know we haven't got the official word from the Houston Astros yet, but Bob Nightingale came out and said that uh, Jose Altuve has a uh, broken thumb, and it's likely that he's going to miss eight to ten weeks. I know Ken Rosenthal uh, and the Venezuelan um, medics uh, kind of uh, hinted this yesterday, but uh, the timetable was just kind of announced today. Dusty Baker said that they don't know how severe it is at camp today. Altuve arrived to camp and he had his finger wrapped and um, he said he will address reporters in a little bit. But Dusty Baker, when asked, said, we don't really know how severe it is yet, but he's probably going to be out for a long time. What are your thoughts, Brett? Well, my initial thoughts are I'm pretty pissed off. Um, if you if you follow me on a Twitter, you can you can read my tweet from last night. Um, it's just one word repeated three times. The letter starts with the F and it has nothing to do with fun. So that right there, just get that off my chest. Um, Daniel Bard, this guy is a he is a wild pitcher. He has a history of of not having control. Number one, let's just get down to it. Why the hell is he on the USA team? He's not even one of the best pitchers in the league. I mean, he's the, he's the Rockies closer. OK, so again, let's just OK, the Rockies closer. OK, he's he's closing for a team that plays in the Rocky Mountains. That can't, that can't fight their way out of a wet paper sack. This team's not even competitive. So why is the Rockies closer even on this team? What is he doing here, number one? Number two, if he's wild leading up to this, why don't they yank him? And I don't care if there's an agreement out there on the table or what, but this is the kind of crap that, that we are having to deal with. And to me, this is a lot different than what Edwin Diaz, you know, happened to him was a freak accident, and you hate to see that. But the amount of, like, rah-rah – and cheerleading that's going on from these sideline, just poverty level fans who are cheering for Jose Altuve, calling him cheater, saying, you know, it's hard to know what pitch is coming if you if you don't hear any signals before the pitch comes. So that's probably why he got hit. I mean, the amount of just stupidity that this creates 
it causes the really dumb people to bubble to the top. And I absolutely hate that aspect of it. Jose Altuve being off of this roster for eight to 10 weeks is not a great start for this team. This team's um, the banner thing for them last year in 2022 was, was your ability to stay healthy. You know, right. you have Jordan Alvarez who just started swinging, you know, more than likely Brantley's not going to be their opening day. Um, and now Jose Altuve in an incident that could have really just really helped seal a really solid start. Now, I don't think because he's out, Eric, that this team loses all its games when he's not in there, but he's your leadoff. He's a heart and soul. I mean, Ryan Presley, we can talk about his quote after the game. I just, the fact that the pitcher showed no emotion afterwards, I don't know, maybe he was shocked, but then again, with his control issues, maybe he's not shocked. Um, was he going after Altuve? That's kind of hard to say, but it's just funny that it would happen to someone like Jose Altuve. Yeah, in this situation, it's part of um, when these players go to play in the WBC, they accept this risk and the teams accept this risk. And they do take out an insurance policy for every player that goes. When Edwin Diaz, he went down with the injury. Uh, the, yes, it's a big blow for the Mets. Yes, they are going to be covered financially. So, um, yes, Diaz is still going to get his salary. The Mets are going to get it covered. But you still can't replace what Diaz can do as the closer. And with Jose Altuve, it's it's not just who he is as a person, but he's your leadoff guy. Like you said, he's the guy that swings at the first pitch. He's the guy that could get you that double. He's the one that rediscovered his legs last year and could steal some bases now. He's the guy that can give you 30 home runs from that leadoff spot and all the first pitch home runs. And everything that he can do for your team, the defense, the leadership, everything. So I'm sure he's going to be around the team. I don't think he's going to go into hibernation, No, but he's going to, uh, what we're waiting on right now is to see how severe it is. Uh, just kind of give you all two examples of recent injuries to thumbs. You have Joey Votto who missed uh, one month uh, due to thumb injury. And that's because he didn't have to have surgery. He just had it casted up and he was able to come back after about missing about a month. Now, uh, Bryce Harper, I believe it was last year, uh, he, he missed almost two months because they actually had to go in and do surgery, put some pins in it because it was a little bit more severe than Vados. So uh, that's that could be a factor that the Astros are looking at. That's why they're not, yes, they, they're not doubting what the Venezuelan doctors are saying and the initial reports, but they want to see how severe it is before they come out and say, yes, this is what's going on. And because once you, once the cat's out of bag, you can't come back and say, well, um, we're going to have to step back a little bit and say, it's going to be okay. Cause even Bob Nightingale came back and said, but um, if he, if Jose Altuve is a quick healer, uh, they he's expected back in May. So that's kind of um, walking back a little bit on the eight to 10 weeks. So it all depends on, I remember how Dusty Baker was saying that from Valdez was the terminator that year and he, he should come back and um, really quickly. So I think it's same situation with Jose Altuve. We don't know uh, the severity at the moment, but all we can do is just pray. And in a second, we need to talk about who's going to replace him. Yeah, exactly. You know, Jose Altuve, I really believe is, in a situation where you have a team around him that is veteran enough that they can take a blow like this in it, not have a domino effect or a ongoing residual effect. So this team really from top to bottom is stacked, whether it's in the lineup, whether it's in the relief pitching or starting pitching. So we're equipped to weather the storm. The blessing and the curse could be that it's early in the season rather than happening in June or July or August, right? Where you're about to go on a playoff run. So you have time to heal. It's a long season and he should be able to get back to full strength pretty quickly in regards to helping the Astros win a, another AOS title, win another ALCS and go back to another world series. So I'm not necessarily concerned there. And look, let me, let me just be clear. I don't begrudge a player for representing his country. I don't begrudge these players for playing with pride for the country across their chest, whether it's USA, Venezuela, Puerto Rico, Cuba, whoever it is. 
I understand that aspect of it. These things we have no control over. But as a fan of the team and as a commentator on the team, it it is somewhat frustrating because you know this is the this is the negative that can come out of it. And um, after we talk about um, being a GM, and if that's what you dream to do, we can talk about um, these possible replacements because I'm really geeked out for our new partner sponsor for today's episode. It's the mobile game Ultimate baseball GM. Have you ever dreamed of becoming an MLB GM and managing your professional baseball franchise? Well, your dream has come true right now. This game is definitely for you. Manage every strategic aspect of your team, play through the season and lead your team to glory. You will be responsible for hiring the right coaching staff, scouting and drafting players, navigating your franchise through free agency, all the ups and downs of a season. If you've got a key player that's out with an injury, who do you replace them with? All this is a in a challenging and realistic game world. Ultimate Baseball GM is completely free and playable offline, play on the go, and as you want to and when you want to. So I'm using it right now. I'm into my, I believe, my second season. Although my team may not be world beaters right now, but I promise you I am drafting quite the ball club and we are building a foundation. I'm trying to do things smartly like the Houston Astros. So I promise you, you'll want to download this app. It's free. And I mean, there's minimal things on there. Like I went premium. It was like $3. Like what's the big deal with that? Dude, I threw that out there. Now I have the added bonus of having extra features. Locked on Astros listeners will get a 100% free boost to their franchise when using the promo locked on. And that's a great boost um, in the game store. So make sure you check it out. To download the game, just visit probaseballgm.com scan the code or look it up in the app stores that's probaseballgm.com ultimate baseball gm start your dynasty today i know a lot of people are thinking like well what about jerks and profar uh, he's a target that the astros have been looking at all off season or astros fans i don't know if the astros have been looking at him but unfortunately like about 30 minutes before we started a podcast, he actually signed with the Rockies. Very convenient. I'm just kidding. But um, <laughs> but he signed with the Rockies for a $8.75 million deal. And so uh, he has to get to 400 plate appearances to get to 8.75, but it's a $7.75 million guarantee. So Jer- Jerkson Profar is no longer available. So in order to replace Jose Altuve, you're going to have to do it in house. So we got about what, not even uh, about what, about a week or maybe a week and a half before the season starts. Um, So you're going to have to figure out who's going to be the second baseman for the Houston Astros. And it's going to be between David Hensley and Mauricio Dubon. And I think that if you're looking at the difference between the two, Dubon has the more experience in the big leagues david hensley i think that uh dusty baker likes him a uh, little bit more i think he trusts uh his bat especially since uh debon's come over with the to the astros he hasn't really shown that much and he hasn't really done much this spring training real quick i want to just read what uh hensley's done this spring training granted it's uh, only 13 games and 26 at bats he's batting 308 with the 957 ops with two home runs Five, uh, four RBIs, five walks, and he has struck out 10 times and he has two stolen bases. So he is stepping up when he needed to. So if you need somebody to fill in at second base, I think it's David Hensley. What say, is he, what say you, Brett? Well, I mean, I think you have both of them on this roster. And I, to me, Hensley is more of your... Um, Utility I, guy? Well, they're both utility guys, but it's who plays the best at that position. Hensley may be better suited at second base than Dubon, but I think Dubon's more is is more of your infield guy. I know he was Justin Verlander's personal center fielder. Still don't buy that line, but um, I know he I know he played that position. He's got a you know he's got a good arm. The Astros are going to put them probably both there at some point. I don't think it's going to be a permanent place that either one of them holds. I think they're going to rotate in and out of those positions. Oh, yeah, definitely. I mean, okay. you, 
you have to put Tim at this point. You've got Jake Myers, who is not out of the question at all for center field. On opening day, they've already said you may have Myers or you may have McCormick in left. Um, I'm sorry, Myers in left, McCormick in center, and Tucker in right field. You know, if if that's the case, you then you've got two guys. You can choose between Hensley or Dubon. I don't think anybody else takes second base um, in this mix. Those those are your two guys. And whoever the Astros, the Astros are going to play matchups. So if the pitcher favors Hensley, they're going to play Hensley. If the matchup favors Dubon, they're going to play Dubon. I just, they are real big on that, on that analytical side of baseball. So, but I've heard rumors that Dusty may, may lead off Chaz McCormick. I'm like, Really? Like, I I really think, wouldn't this be the perfect opportunity to put Kyle Tucker in leadoff? You know, I mean, wouldn't you want your guy that's supposed to have a monster year to be leadoff for once or twice? I don't know. I just, second base is going to be manned by more than one person to right. maybe a third person. Well, a lot of people read into the fact that Kyle Tucker batted leadoff a lot of times when he was with the Houston Astros during spring training. Uh, not Team USA. By the way, it was awesome that he had such a big game to lead Team USA to um, to the next round, including hit a home run home run off of Luis Garcia. That was pretty awesome. But um, I think that was also to get him more at bats. So just uh, so I wouldn't read too much into that. But if you're looking for somebody to make great contact, somebody who can make instant. Um, instant reaction or instant uh, action, I guess is what I'm looking for. I think it's Kyle Tucker. I mean, I think uh, until Michael Brantley comes back, you can have uh, Jeremy Pena batting second, and then you're, you can just go down the lineup like this. Tucker, Pena, Bregman, Alvarez, Abreu, McCormick. Then the bottom three is kind of where it gets a little wishy-washy. Hensley, Myers, and then Maldi. Yeah, I mean, I think that's great. I, I think you have um, a a great lineup um, top to bottom regardless. Look, if there's any team that can weather this storm, Eric, it's the Houston Astros. No other team is as equipped as this team. Now, there are other teams that have, that have solid lineups. I'm not saying everybody's just chumps. You know, they're just chumps at the plate. But Bregman, um, you know, Abreu coming in as a veteran. Um, Jeremy Pena carries himself like a veteran. Heck, his first game back from the WBC he hit two home runs in spring training. You know, I know it's spring training, but he hit the cover off the ball. And, and so these guys are chomping at the bit. They're ready to play. They're excited to get out there and be defending champions. They're they're ready to reign. You know, I, I saw the intro at um, spring training that they're going to show at opening day, the new intro for the Astros to start the games. And, you know, they're like heavy as the head that wears a crown, but we're here and we're ready to basically defend it. And they're going to very much go into this season as defending world champions. And the fact that Jose Altuve is not on the field to start is not going to slow this team down any. So if anybody thinks that the Astros are down or wounded, be careful what you wish for, because they still will bring the bats. They still will throw the smoke and, I'm I'm ready for it. I, I'm still just as excited about opening day today as I was yesterday when when Jose Altuve was healthy. Uh, to go back to what you're saying about Kyle Tucker, I mean, sorry, uh, Chaz McCormick. Um, he this is what Dusty Baker had to say. I love his example presence, just how he goes out and plays every night, and how so frigging good he is, and how he can give us the edge right away. Um. So his swinging at first pitch, there's something about it when he when he does that, it gives the st stadium and the team so many good vibes. So, um, or maybe that was just Chaz McCormick talking about Altuve. I don't know. Well, that's okay. Well, look, anytime Altuve gets in the box, yeah. I don't. It, it gives you great vibes. Yeah. And when I saw that pitch last night, Eric, at first, I mean. I knew it didn't hit him in the head, but my first thought was, oh, my God, did he get hit in the head? You know, something amazing happened, um, I guess, about a week and a half ago. Justin Turner with the Red Sox got hit in the face, was bleeding like a UFC fighter, got stitched up and came in the next game and got like two hits. So, I mean, right. these look, I don't know. I don't know what kind of sticky substances they're not allowed to use in WBC, 
But that's something we need to tackle this week because they are banning pretty much everything and anything sticky, like in the clubhouse. They're even talking about having checks in the clubhouse, having these thorough checks. And it's like these umpires are being inundated with things they have to do. When are they going to be able to do their actual job of calling outs or make, you know, getting plays right? They're so preoccupied with everything else. Those are the things I'm more worried about. And I think it becomes a player safety issue. These, these pitchers need some sort of substance. And if a guy's wild and he's not all over the place, especially something like the WBC, pull his sorry, butt. I'm sorry. I don't care what you've done. I don't care if you're a closer, pull him. And why don't you pull him in a regular game? Like you don't have a three batter minimum in the WBC. As far as I'm concerned, pull the guy. But look, at the end of the day, it's just it's just frustrating because we have to, as Houston fans, always go to was it on purpose? More than likely it wasn't, but that that's that's how we feel. And I think that's a much better reaction than someone cheering for it and cheering for for a, a player to get hurt. Because if anybody cheered and was happy that Edmund Diaz went down, like shame on you. That's that's malice and that's just wrong. I think a lot of people are just cheering on social media that the the cheater, the um, trash can banner, Jose Altuve went down. And even like uh, Jared Carabas, a guy that Astros fans probably didn't like for a while there, but he was actually coming to Jose Altuve's defense and saying, guys, this is one of the best players in the game. It was proven that he didn't cheat. Just let the man live. Don't root for uh, some uh, player this good. So we have some people that are starting to convert out there. And it's still probably good to bet on the Astros out there. And this episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Yeah, that's right. The tournament is heating up. And now it's perfect time to download the FanDuel FanDuel app, America's new number one sports book. Because every new customer gets a no-sweat first bet up to $1,000. That's bonus bets back if your first bet doesn't win. So like this weekend, if you were in the first or second round of this tournament, there were a lot of upsets. If you lost that bet and you thought Kansas was going to rock chalk Jayhawk and they dropped the ball, you would have got $1,000 in bonus bets. That's right. So just download the FanDuel Sportsbook app today. It's safe, secure, and super easy to use. No, I'm not encouraging you to lose your first bet. I'm just telling you there's some, some security and you have a peace of mind knowing that you still get a reward. Um, you can bet on everything from money line to point scores and threes drained. Plus, FanDuel's, FanDuel even lets you combine your bets for a chance at a bigger payout with the same game parlay. So don't miss this chance to get your no sweat first bet up to $1,000 in bonus bets when you go to FanDuel.com slash locked on. That's FanDuel.com slash locked on to learn more. Make every moment more with FanDuel an official sports betting partner of the NBA. All right. So if you're looking at, um, I guess, who's going to replace Altuve, you can't replace Altuve. All you can do is just find a stopgap for two months until he comes back. I think David Hensley, uh, you may be right there. They may have more of a platoon, but I think you're going to see David Hensley step up. I think you're going to see the rise of David Hensley this year. Uh, I'm not saying he's going to be the rookie of the year, but I think you're going to see him become the next uh, Marwin Gonzalez, the next guy that can probably do it all. And uh, I think it's better than Marwin Gonzalez. Yeah, he probably will be better than Marwin Gonzalez, but I'm just saying he's I don't probably mean. this is probably going to be a good thing for him because he's going to get the playing time he would not have before. So um, Dubon will get a little bit more playing time. He'll get more comfortable because as soon as Dubon got traded over here, he did play every once in a while, but he didn't get played enough to hit a lot. So, uh, but. Uh, I know that Pena said that it was a great time. I had a blast seeing countries go at it. I've never seen an environment like that with all the drums and flags, the waving of flags. It was a pretty cool experience. Then you see Trey Turner after hitting Grand Slam saying that I wouldn't have changed anything. I would do this over and over again. This is a big event for these players. I know fans uh, like Mets and Astros fans were like, what the heck? We just lost our um, our star players, 
But these guys are out there having fun. It's not a worthless tournament for them. They're, they're doing, they're representing their countries. And even Jose Altuve, he said, since I remember probably as a 10, 11 year old kid, I was trying to make a Venezuelan team to go to world championships and stuff. It's always been a dream for me. And every single Venezuelan kid, Dominican kid, Puerto Rican kid, American kid to represent their country. I'm really excited and it's going to bring a lot of memories. This was before the tournament. And uh, even Neris and Pena said that they um, they don't think that this is going to discourage them. Like after Diaz's injury, this is going to discourage people from playing in future. In fact, uh, King Griffey Jr. was joking around and saying, you know what? I'm going to start getting in shape. So next time it comes around, I'm going to go and show them that I can still play. And yeah, so he, a lot yeah. of people really enjoy this. And yes, there's some risk. Just like um, you saw what uh, Gavin Lux, he hurt himself in actual spring training game. It's the same thing. Who who knows what would happen? Well, you know, Kingery Jr. was in the in the um, batting cage and taking swings, and um, he looked good. He looked like he could still take on major league pitching. Um, look, I don't know that the players are going to be shied away or discouraged from playing, but don't you think owners might be looking at this? This is two $100 million players that have been hurt as a result of being a participant in the WBC, not from part, not from the actual game in Edwin Diaz's case, but these are two. And then Freddie Freeman, you know, he went down. His is more mild, but yeah, I get you. But still there's three, that's actually three 100 plus million dollar players that have been affected negatively. And like you said, they have insurance policies, which is great, but insurance, like you stated correctly, does not replace an Edwin Diaz on the field. You may save your money, but it doesn't save the saves. And so it is definitely something to consider. Now, when do you play the WBC? You don't play it in November like they originally thought they they could do because the players that just got through with the playoffs need the time off. And this is really the best time. The only alternate to the WBC going on in Major League Baseball not being affected is if you go back to the old style of Olympic play where you had amateur athletes going. And the reason why the USA injected and started putting pros in these Olympic and baseball classics is because other countries were using their professionals. The U.S. felt like it was unfair to send these 17, 18, 19 year old college students up against 27 year old Russians or 25 year old, you know, other teams. So we're like, OK, you put your best. We'll put our best. You know, you go back to the dream team with the USA basketball team with John, with them, um, Michael Jordan, Magic Johnson, all those, you know, that amazing team. So that kind of jettisoned us to today. And that's where we are. It's a I think it's a great tournament. Like I said, I experienced it firsthand the passion these people have is is untenable it's second to none it's just it just comes with the game but my thinking went to this just because players get injured in the regular season or spring training doesn't necessarily mean we stop doing that because i don't know if you saw this brandon nimmo was basically throwing shade at edwin diaz in the press the next day in a spring training game trying to slide into second he injures himself, himself yeah and he may be out. And I'm like, whoa. How was he a, uh, throwing shade? Yeah, he was throwing shade. He was saying he was throwing shade at Diaz saying to me, I would rather win a World Series than a World Baseball Classic title. It's not worth it to me to go to a World Baseball Classic tournament and play like he literally um, I watched the press conference. He sat down at a table and he was basically saying, well, a World Series title means more to me, and I would rather be healthy at the start of the season than get injured for a World Baseball Classic because it's definitely not as big of a deal to me. Uh, he and, believes that he'll be ready by opening day, by the way. Uh, there's who, um, there's no struggle. Nemo? Nemo, yeah. Well, but I'm just saying, he literally threw shade at Diaz, at his own teammate, the next day he got hurt in a spring training game. So it was kind of ironic that those two things happened back-to-back -back like that. Yeah, so it's just it's just frustrating to see Jose Altuve go down like that. As soon as that happened, everybody was talking about that on Twitter. And 
we've seen this before. We have the history of Jeff Bagwell and I uh, just, it's just our star players uh, getting hurt and it's just frustrating uh, to see this, but Altuve is one of our most lovable Astros we've had. And it's hard for, to see why people hate him, uh, but it's just like, we understand why it's just because of what happened back then. But at the same time, you shouldn't be rooting for, Oh, I'm glad they finally got him and everything like that. But it was good to see him playing baseball and like excited and having fun and just doing all that. And just everybody having fun in the uh, tournament. So now we need to see what the rest of the spring training brings uh, we should see Alvarez um, in a game sometime this next week. That's what Dusty Baker said today. And so uh, we'll see um, Michael Brantley uh, probably after Alvarez, but we're going to see Alvarez at some time this next week. But um, that's good. And Hunter Brown is looking a lot better. But um, I think what we're going to see is – the Astros trying to figure out what they're going to do until Altuve comes back. And it's a big loss. And if you put one of your big power bats like Pena or Tucker up at the beginning of your, your lineup, then you're going to kind of suffer a little bit more in the middle of the lineup. But I, I don't know if the Astros have too many choices. I wouldn't put McCormick up uh, lead off. I wouldn't put Hensley or Myers. I think that it's got to be either Pena or Tucker at this point. And once Brantley comes back, then they'll have to kind of revise that, I would think, because you don't want lefty-lefty, maybe. Yeah. yeah, look, I mean, again, I think with the three batter minimum, the lefty-righty thing's not as important as they still make it out to be, if, if I'm being perfectly honest, because you don't bring in your situational left-hander anymore. So the left-right-left left thing, I think, is more of a preference thing than the strategy thing. If I'm being fully... I'm honest with that. Um, but Dusty's I know, old school. Well, I know, I, I know, but but what I'm saying is the philosophy. I get it, but I don't think it's as necessary. Or um, that's, anyways. Yeah. Um, look, at the end of the day, the Houston Astros are going to be fine. Uh, someone said here that the Astros should have kept Guriel. He can play second and be a minimum utility rotation guy. He's not in a place where you want to play him all over the field, I really don't think. And plus, you would have to take up a roster spot. Now, and we haven't talked about this. You oh. and I mentioned it beforehand yeah. is that maybe this opens up a door for someone like Justin Dearden. And if it does, then you can have more. You could have a true one-two punch at second base with Hensley and Dubon if you bring up Dearden. If yeah. Dearden takes a spot from either Bannon or Madris. Um, on the on the 40 man if they want to do that so but once you start moving him up you've got to be careful how many times you move him up and down because then you run out of options with Deard and then you're forced to leave him on there. well it's per year so so the options is um every year you bring him up so that's not the issue so, okay okay yeah but um so i think i think this 95% gives uh, Dearden a chance to start with the Houston Astros. And I also think this gives a um, Yiner Diaz a chance to start with the Astros as well because um, you see him in left field today. And so that's something that the Astros are trying. They're like, okay, well, let's try him out in left field, see if we can get both catchers on the roster. And then, well, yeah, I think, well, I think, I think you'll see, um, I think you'll, you, you can also see him at third base. I believe Diaz played a little bit of third. Um, he he's played first before. He he's played three or four positions. Um, Corey Lee, I believe, has played first. Um, Corey Lee's more your not, not really. I think he's play. played more catcher. But well, no, he has. I'm I'm just saying. I well think for three innings, but yeah. Okay, I, what I'm saying is he he's played there. So you have minor leaguers that are in a system where they move them around to make them more valuable. So. Um, at the end of the day, it's it, it's going to be game time decision come opening day, who's going to be where, how they're going to use them. Hopefully the time is shorter than it is long. But you know what? Maybe this rest is something that Jose Altuve needed. I know he was hitting the ball well, but maybe the rest won't be a bad thing for him. You know, you know he, he is a little bit older this year. He had a great season last season. 
and I just think this skyrockets him to have an even more successful season when he comes back. Ryland Bannon is having good springing, batting 280, 837 OPS, one home run, two RBIs. He could maybe make the roster, but if you need the roster spot, JJ Majevic is having decent spring, 269, one home run, seven RBIs. But if you look at um, the other guy, Bly Madrius, um, uh, where is he? He's not, he's batting actually 296, 715. No home runs, two RBIs, but he does have eight total hits. So he's getting a lot of singles and uh, some extra base hits. But um, so nobody's really separated themselves outside of David Hensley. And so so we'll, we'll see how they get a spot for Dearden. But I think Dearden has definitely earned his way on the roster. And I'm not going to be hesitant to say that he may have battled with Jake Myers, who's batting 269, 629 OPS, zero home runs, one RBI to maybe battle for a platoon in left field or center field, wherever they decide to play him. But um, that's all we got, I think, for uh, this edition. Do you have any closing thoughts about what I just said? No, I just think I, I think an even hotter take is that Dearden probably work, has worked his way onto this roster without this Jose Altuve injury. He, he may oh, yeah. he may already oh, yeah. be in the mix, and if he is, this may solidify that argument. So just stay tuned into us. Uh, we'll, we'll keep you up to date all week long. Remember, we're your team every day this season. It's going to be exciting. Eric and I are going opening day. When it happens, we will have some more tickets. I got another pair of tickets handed to me for the Space Cowboys versus Astros game at Minute Maid Park, and we'll give those away at some point this week. All right, guys, thank you for making us your first listen every day. Make sure you subscribe to us. If you're listening to us here for your first time, we'll be here all season, all off season, all post season. Your team every day. My name is Eric Heisman. He is Brett Chancy. We are the Locked on Astros podcast and Ghostros. And get well, Jose Altuve. <laughs>